Hey guys, it's Core Ross, and today we're unboxing the Asus NUC Pro. So the NUC branding might be familiar to you. Intel used to have that, and they were trying to kickstart the mini PC revolution. And you might remember this skull that used to be on all those mini PCs. Well, they've handed off the branding and the philosophy to Asus, and Asus is continuing the enthusiast approach. So let's start with the unboxing experience and what you get inside. So effectively, the box is airtight. You just got to hold the top part and the rest will come out with gravity. And then you've got your NUC inside and you've got some fancy paper that it says ASUS NUC. And this is actually in gold foil, so it actually does look quite high premium. But the rest is just your usual manuals and all that. But it does feel like a slightly more premium experience checking this little mini PC out compared to others. ASUS really is trying to do a good job here of taking over the mantle of the Intel NUC before it. And then what else is in the box is a visa mount, which allows you to attach this to a monitor or of course other structures and allows you to hide it away or have it just in a very nice convenient location, which doesn't take up any desk space. And then you've got the power cord and power brick. And this is something that's awesome to me is finally power bricks are getting smaller and smaller. And this is 120 watt this one is capable of doing. And then something you don't get in the box with this is actually a display cable. So if you actually pick one of these up and you're thinking of just plugging it in and playing with it as soon as it arrives, make sure you do have an HDMI cable so you can do that. Now I assume they're probably thinking, you know what, at this point, people probably have drawers full of HDMI cables in their home. So they're probably gonna have no problem plugging this in, especially at the price you're buying this for. Now let's take a look at the device itself. On the front, we've got the power button along with three USB ports, one type C, two type A. On the side, we've got a Kensington lock, and at the back, we've got two HDMI 2.1. We've got an Ethernet port, along with two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and two USB Type A. There's also a removable slot at the bottom as well, which allows access to the hard drive bay where you can put in a SATA drive. Now, a lot of mini PCs also like to have the addition of a card reader in their enclosures as well, but this one does not. And then if we compare this to the A8, which is my favorite mini PC so far, it is a little bit taller. Of course, it has a little bit more expansion options inside. And I gotta say the black enclosure is definitely a big positive for me. I know that many PCs have been going towards silver and blue for quite some time now, but I really do like a matte black finish as well. So let's talk about what's inside this. So we've got the latest Intel Core Ultra 7 processor 155H. So this is a 22 thread CPU with six performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and two low power cores. And it's got a max frequency of 4.8 gigahertz, along with integrated ARC graphics. And then the CPU has also got some special sauce for working with AI. And then if you do a lot of video editing, which I'm gonna do on this, you've also got quick sync included on the CPU. So that makes editing videos and rendering them out a lot quicker. Now, one of the coolest features here is on the back, it's actually got a little switch that you can flick, and this will open the rear compartment. And it's quite awesome because normally with these mini PCs, you have to take out at least four screws to get in here. And you'll find the storage, the RAM, and you can also put a SATA drive in the top there, which I showed on the back has the access panel. Now I'll also note that of course, you only need to hit that one switch in the back and the whole back plate becomes free. And that is not great because look at its placement. It's very easy to pick this PC up and accidentally flick it. So there is a locking mechanism here that you can do with a flat headed screwdriver and I recommend doing it. It comes default unlocked. So I'd recommend you lock it either after you've done any internal stuff you wanna do or before, just in case you forget. Otherwise, yeah, you could pick this up and then the back comes off. It's also not a hinge or anything like that. So putting it back on, it's a little bit delicate and you gotta get and work yourself there. But as you can see, I've decided to go ahead and lock this into position just with that flat head. And as a result, it is now locked. And I think it's pretty good mechanism, much better than having to unscrew a bunch of screws to get into the back of the thing. So very, very cool. And this is a nice feature from Asus. Now let's talk performance. The big surprise for me was actually the graphics. Normally the Intel GPUs are just trash and not very good at all at doing anything, but these are ARC graphics. So it's actually taken their big full on graphics cards that they've made and they've managed to make some advancements with that so that their onboard graphics are now far better. In fact, actually outperforming the AMD 780M that I have in another mini PC that I was really impressed with before, this actually manages to slightly beat that. And then the CPU performance is excellent. And something that I was really surprised about is the fan in this is actually really quiet. And especially compared to other mini PCs where those fans ramp up just like a laptop and get really loud, 
This is surprisingly quiet. Oh yeah, and I should also tell you what this one is configured with. So this one has a one terabyte Gen 4 SSD, so that's NVMe, and then it also has 32 gigabyte of RAM. Now I do believe you can get a bare bones configuration from a Zeus if you want that, but I believe the two configurations you'll find for this in the links in the description below are for the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, which this one runs. And then the other one that has a lower configuration has the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H processor. Now let's take a look at my performance tests. First off, the CPU in this thing is pretty damn good. Of course, it's a mobile CPU, so it's not as good as a desktop CPU, but out of all the many PCs I've tested, this is now the most powerful one I have ever used. And then the GPU is a really big surprise because normally onboard graphics for Intel is horrible, and AMD has only recently actually come out with half-decent onboard graphics, and suddenly Intel manages to come out and actually surpass them here, so I was really amazed by that. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not a gaming PC. Do not buy it for gaming. This is a productivity PC that is made for small spaces and enthusiasts who want to mess around in small form factors. If you want to play games, you can make yourself a really cheap tower that will outperform this in games, and that is not what this little thing is for. But still, the graphics performance is surprising. I was able to get 100 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p, and I was also able to play Space Marines 2 at the highest FSR setting. So it didn't look amazing, but it actually played pretty okay. And then let's talk about my use case for this mini PC. So I've been using it now for about a week. I've edited this video up on it, and I gotta say, it is awesome. Now the mini PCs have entered my life and I've started using them for travel editing when I'm away and they are so freaking cool. They actually replace a laptop for me. And of course that means I need a travel display and keyboard and all that, but I've just been very happy with the overall performance out of this thing because it's capable of kicking ass with any kind of video editing and especially with QuickSync that ties into stuff like Adobe Premiere Pro, making things render a lot easier and faster. And so far this thing just appears to be a really efficient little box with a surprisingly quiet fan compared to other mini PCs. And I've been seriously impressed with that part, especially because I do of course record audio and it's good not to have a fan noise going in the background. So yeah, this is the first NUC that I've ever checked out. And I gotta say, I am extremely impressed with it. It is a lot of fun to mess around with. And I've really started to fall in love with these little mini PCs and very happy to be able to check them out and bring them to you guys. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you're a mini PC enthusiast, I really want to know what you use these mini PCs for. Because of course, they're very expensive. Miniaturizing anything means that they're going to end up being very expensive to purchase. But they're cool as hell for sure. And I want to know where they're actually used day to day by people out there. Because of course, mine is for video editing. But other people will probably do a lot more different stuff on them. And I know that the Intel NUC here has some special use cases that people jump into. And I'd love to know what they are in the comments below and I'll catch you guys next time.